How would you guys describe your music to someone who's never heard your shit before? Capirotada. Okay. Capirotada is a, is a Mexican type of uh, food. It's actually like a dessert. And they put all kinds of, it's like a bunch of bread. They put a bunch of bread, uh, cheese, ice cream, and they put it in the oven for like hours. And it comes up and it's not ice cream. No, it's My aunt puts ice cream in it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know during or I don't yeah, know when. Nuts, uh, uh, I know it has ice cream. Coconut, raisins, plums, you know, bread. Yeah. I guess everyone yeah. has their own twist. I yeah, exactly. Heard that one before. So an amalgamation of the sweet stuff. Yes, good yeah, stuff. exactly. <laughs> I, I was listening to your songs and I noticed there's a lot, of, a lot of very soulful elements to it. And you'd say, is that the driving force behind your, your sound? I think, I, you know, it's four of us, so we all have different drives, you know, but I think we kind of all settled on this, uh, this aesthetic of, of, like, of like soul music and uh, how soul music has um, basically wrapped its arms around the world. You know, whether it's for women, whether it's Latin America, whether it's Asia, Africa, etc. Soul music has influenced in each, is each other throughout. Soul music has, has traveled the world and artists have influenced themselves uh, like collectively throughout the centuries. Like James Brown influenced people, you know, may have influenced somebody like, uh, give me somebody. Who James Brown might have influenced somebody? Uh, Fela Kuggins. Fela Kuggins. Exactly. Right. James Brown. Right. That's he just example. takes the sound and flips it and makes it his own thing, and that's just what's happening. The soul music we're influenced by does that. Yeah, and then Fela Kuti also influenced uh, Lisandro Mesa in, Col mm. in Colombia. You know mm. where they do a track like they just cover a Fela Kuti track or Afrobeat track, or whatever, in the seventies. So the, the influencers of the influencer. Yeah, exactly. And it just keeps going. Yeah, and we kind of like you know really focused on late 60s and 70s music. Which in that era to me, I feel was a little bit more quality versus quantity oriented. Yeah. Would you guys say that you have that aesthetic to yourselves, to your sound? Yeah, definitely. It took us a long time to put out this last album that we just finished putting out and uh, we put a lot of energy into making sure that the sounds were right. We worked with our producer uh, from New York. His name is Leon Michaels, who's part of the Menahan Street Band, okay. that whole Dabtone Records crew. Um, who he has worked with in the past. And so uh, those cats have definitely been studying that sound for a long time. You know, the gear that they have in their studio is just like of, of that aesthetic, you know what I mean? That's what they focus on. They put a lot of energy into making sure they get those and craft those sounds. So we were very lucky to have connected with him um, to, to approach the aesthetic that we've been working at for a long time now. And this is the first time you're working, you're working with our, it? Uh, our first album was a late 60s exploration, and right now we're about 1974. If you want to talk about... Times, timetables, time scale? Yeah, exploration, wild wilderness, you know, adventures, and how we're honing in on, on the dimensions of our latest album. And, and you have some experience in production as well, right? Mm -hmm. And producing other bands and... Is that something that adds to your own sound and, and maybe talk about the experience with that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we all have, we all have gear that we use to record and we've been, we've been doing it for a long time. Our first album, we recorded in my house down the street here when I lived here. And um, that required Gabriel to bring in all his, all his microphones and uh, all our collective instruments. You know, the second album was the same way we recorded his house. We brought in everything we got. It's just like every damn cable, every adapter we had. <laughs> so, um, you know, by the time we, we come to this level, uh, recording the last album, we, we, we had, you know, some experience in terms of mic placements. And, 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 but I think mostly we focused on uh, arrangements. Arrangements. You know, arrangements is, is it was key. Simplification, you know, how to let harmonies pop out, how to let that. So I think in this album we're more focused as musicians than we are um, as as engineers, as producers. Considering we're working with a hot team, um, with uh, um, Leon Michaels as produ as producer, as Bardo was saying. I was uh, w watching an interview with Keith Richards and he was talking about how even just that space, the space between sonic arrangements like you're talking about, like melodic compositions, is super important, that air. Would you guys, I, I, when I hear your sound, I kind of hear like 
you know, pauses in the right time and oh, right. it's not constantly filled with unnecessary. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, that's always a constant challenge to, to get the vibe, like to get a particular like feeling, you know what I mean? I always hear, for me, it's always about, it's about different feelings. Uh, I think for all of us it is. Uh, and I mean, yeah, with this record, it's definitely approaching different songs with different feelings. Like we have one song called La Jura, in which it's just like, with a slow build. You know, we have like, just, it's just guitars. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the beat drops a minute later. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like, yeah, we definitely play with that and there's all kinds of vibes. But you know, Chicano's a Batman, it, Chicano Batman is about continuously delving into different vibrations and feelings. How has it been dealing with stereotypes? It's been rough. It's been a constant, I mean, our name is Chicano Batman, so. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a lot of people take that as face value. You know, we're right. artists, right? So right. we're working in the, in the world of, of ideas. So, um, you know, you don't know how somebody's gonna interpret you. Right. You know, you, you, you have no idea. And so obviously we get a lot of that because of like, how we look. Like and, a gimmick flack. Yeah. Like, and, oh, what you, and all of a sudden they, they realize they're, they're exposed to this whole different world once they hear you. Yeah, so I nice. mean, uh, hopefully, you know, and that's what we're working towards. But you know, that's good, man. You know, I think that's a positive thing. When somebody comes with you at a judgment of who you are, it exposes more about the, who they are, you know, without having listened to anything. Right. You know, so it just, it just talks about, it just starts like, rooting people in their own, you know, perceptions of, of reality. You know, the reality is there's a lot of people creating beautiful art, you know, creating a lot of beautiful novels, you know, contributing to the world of, you know, philosophical, like, frame of thought in, in, in our position today. And I think um, if people aren't ready for that, then they have a lot to work to do themselves, you know? And right. uh, despite whatever color or gender or orientation we are, you know, it's all contributing to this bigger, thing you know and you're either ready for it or you're not but if you're not you're gonna get left behind you believe in aliens hell yeah Good. collectively yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you have to believe in a lot of things yeah. <laughs> i think if we don't believe in aliens we're ignorant man because yeah. we're just one small little ass rock in a big ass universe so if you don't believe in aliens i don't know what you believe in <laughs> what's something your fans would be super duper surprised about about individually about you guys that you guys you know that they wouldn't n normally know about you? Mm, that's a good question. That's a hard one. <laughs> Super surprised? Mm -hmm. That they don't know about you. Something they don't know about you. Something your fans don't know about you. This usually stumps people. <laughs> They're like, hmm. I want to get inappropriate, but no. <laughs> yeah, 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 get it. <laughs> How about three testicles? <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing, I'm messing. Uh, I think that's what would be surprising to some folks. I think, uh, you know, this guy right here has like one, some of the most ex amazing life experiences that uh, of anyone, anyone that I've known. Dos Equis guy's got nothing on you? <laughs> yeah, straight up, yeah, straight up. This guy is the guy, you know what I mean? He used to be the man with the mullet, now he's the man with the, you know, cut off uh, now ruffles. Now he's the man with the silver <laughs> Yeah. Um, Wolverine. Yeah, man, this guy's been all over the place. He, he, he left Colombia when he was young. I mean, he could tell you his own story. Live in Colombia, just travel, be lucky to be like, uh, go to Europe, you know, like have an amazing experience and like discover music over there, basically, and just like, develop this passion and get to California and, and, and meet these guys. That's like, that's the craziest He adventure. studied drumming in, in France for five years. Wow. And then just got here. And Fluent so French, speaks fluent French. Amazing to find guy cats that, and inspire me every day, you know, like, and we discovered like new sounds like this album like i i basically get into like soul music through their own listening experience you know that for me that's new but i'm trying to get into that the mood you know and vibe with the old records you know and the all we can jam on you know and and, and all the compositions bardo bring into to, to the band you know so it's yeah it's like every day it's a different journey you're Yesterday I was in Colombia, right now I'm here. Oh wow, <laughs> that's awesome. That's pretty crazy. You guys, you guys just came off of a tour. Yeah, we did. We just came back from San Francisco. Uh, we played, uh, we sold out the Fillmore. We actually, the whole tour was pretty much sold out, which was great. We started it off in Seattle. And so our last show, uh, which was a few days ago, uh, Saturday night at the Roxy, was also sold out, so. Nice. So yeah, it's a good feeling, man. And you guys have some upcoming? Definitely. Um, go ahead, Carlos, let him know. Uh, this just that was just basically this is basically a little gap that we have in the tour, but the meat of the tour doesn't start till the end of the week. 
and that's when we're gone for about a month. So the West Coast was just like a 10 day thing and then we tour the whole country all the way back to Coachella um, in April. That's when we'll be back. Yes. How's it feel being vets? We're probably more seasoned performers, I would say. We've been, we played on some pretty big stages since then and that just helps you build confidence and also just our musicianship's been getting stronger and stronger and I think we just pay attention to more things like production value and our shows now. Uh, we're bringing a three-piece backup vocalist this time around. Um, they're in this band called 79.5. And basically when we recorded the new album, uh, we had these singers from the band uh, Mariachi Flores Toloache recorded the backup vocals on that whole record and um, to recreate those sounds live, we were able to get another uh, group of musicians to come in and sing with us. So um, I think just paying attention to stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. What's the most fucked up thing you've seen on the road so far? Uh, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> I don't know. On the road, on the road, when you're driving and you see all the dead that carcasses on the roadkill. <laughs> all the roadkill <laughs> road road yeah. road yeah. on I-10 going it's, to Texas. It's pretty yeah. sad, yeah. you know. We could, we could, like, Coyotes yeah. and shit. Like Man over. we could work as like a pound, you know how the animal control? If we had a side gig as animal control, we'd be making like a good living. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, just yeah. The tour bus. Exactly. You know, just have the, picking it up, picking it up picking as we go down up. the tent. Yeah, yeah. On the tent freeway. We'll be, oh man, we would have that shit full. I mean armadillo, what you want? Deer, you want coyote, what you want? What you want? You want a porcupine, we got you. <laughs> what you need? You need a rat. What's the uh, the last thing that uh, you guys want to mention that maybe we didn't mention here in this interview? Our album is out. It's called Freedom is Free. Uh, we released it, seems like a few de days ago. It's out worldwide. You can find it wherever. And, uh, you know, get your copy. Uh, I think most importantly, I think, is uh, you want to give thanks to the fans because they're the ones that are putting us here eight years strong. You know, that people have a relationship to our band, to us. And I think uh, none of this would ever be possible without them. They're the ones that keep coming and keep sharing our music to the friends and to the loved ones. And that love just keeps growing and our community keeps getting bigger. And, uh, you know, it's, we're nobody without, without the help of, of the people, you know? I have a, a special question from the people for you guys, from uh, Arturo and, and Erica Castellanos from the 760. They said, uh, what's the meaning um, in the song Balloons? And and why the balloon? It's it's really it's really like a sim simple song. It's just about it's just like for me it's about like an existential experience. Um, I was just hanging out at the park and I saw a spider just like actually I didn't know what it was but it, it looked like it was a balloon flying away, you know. And then I was just staring at it for a long time. I was just chilling, relaxing, you know, just enjoying, you know, delving in my own thoughts. You know what I mean? And then uh, I saw this balloon flying away, but the more I stared at it, the more I realized that it was a spider. And then I, I just kind of tripped out on my own, my own thought process. Whoa. You know what I mean? Just what, like, that, and that, that's what I mean by existential, that it's like, you know, your, your, your perception, et cetera. You know, kind of the way like somebody like Aldous Huxley writes about Brave new perception. World. And obviously all kinds of people have written it in reference to drugs and to LSD and all those things, but in the 60s and whatnot, but it's like, it's really, you know, like George Harrison would say, it's, it's in your head, you know, it has nothing to do with drugs. You could get on the trip without drugs. Like, it's just all how you perceive and how you, you're able to connect with the world around you. Nice. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. It's a little mission. Sorry. Yes, no worries, man. I, <laughs> thank love. you so much. Labor of love. Great to meet you, brother. You too, brother. Yeah, man.